Hey there, and welcome to 3D Printed FPV, where we talk about everything related to printing, building, and flying 3D printed aircraft and quadcopters. Hey, give me a subscribe or a thumbs up, would much appreciate that. I'm trying to grow this channel and need all the support I can get. All right, buckle your seat belts. All right, crew, if your extruder's popping, skipping, slipping, or clicking, this is your ultimate guide to fixing it. So let's get straight into this. This is a K1, K1 Max. Um, first thing we're gonna do is pull this cover off the back of the extruder. This thing hinges up there, kind of the motion I made with my hand. You click it off the bottom and it comes right off. No surprise there. The next thing we've gotta do is remove these four screws, three screws, I mean. Um, there's two on the right side there, one on the left side. And of course, we've gotta pull the tube out here. Uh, you just do that by depressing the white ring and pulling up on the tube itself. All right, so let's get this extruder off of here. Um, First thing we're going to do is get that uh, tube and the filament out. Just remember you have to have your nozzle heated um, to be able to pull that filament out and you've got to have the release lock off your um, extruder gears there to be able to pull that out. So no surprises there, pretty easy. Um, this just takes a uh, Allen wrench. Um, yeah, give me a thumbs up, that's right. Um, to pull off these um, three screws this is a pretty quick process, um, won't bore you here. I do like to loosen all the three screws, as you see here, before I fully loosen everything. I feel like it just uh, doesn't put as much load on the entire system. And you'll see I do that everywhere, basically pre-tighten, then final tighten or pre-loosen and completely loosen everything. Um, I'll kick this into warp drive here while we take these three screws off and then uh, we'll get going again. All right, boom, back with you, crew. Uh, we've got the three screws off now and we're gonna pull this extruder up. It sets in like a little slot there and you have to basically go straight vertical with it. What happens is the uh, stepper motor wires start to bind up on you and it's kind of tough to get out that last little uh, bit. And then you see where I'm pointing there with the uh, wrench. That uh, lines up and takes the place of the Bowden tube and keeps the uh, filament headed on down into the uh, print head itself. So the next step here, is uh, taking these two screws off that actually uh, hold the stepper motor on. So again, I like to loosen these up a little bit and then fully um, loosen them up and pull it off. I just feel like it uh, reduces the load and stress on this. And especially when you put this piece back together, you really have to um, work on the alignment because the uh, stepper motor gear and the extruder gears have to get lined up. So it's a good practice to uh, just loosen things up step by step. So here we go. We got that off, um, two screws are loose, and you can see the stepper motor's coming off. All right, so let's take a look at these metal gears we're gonna put in. Um, these are available via the link down in the description. This is an upgrade. Um, these replace some poly gears that are in there right now. You'll see the poly gears coming out, and um, I just trust these things a bunch more. I've had one poly gear break on me in under 100 hours of printing, and um, these metal gears are gonna last um, forever. So, um, yeah, unpackaging these, they come with uh, nice bearings in them and some uh, nice stainless hardware there. You can see that um, they're super good quality. I really like the uh, feel of them. Bearings turn really easy. Um, the gears are cut really nice. Just uh, overall a good quality product. I would really recommend that you upgrade your printer with these. Um, I've seen a... Uh, you know, complete reliability increase here with uh, without the plastic gears breaking on me on a regular basis. But um, I do print a lot and uh, print a lot of filament that's uh, high pressure to push through the nozzle and have a pretty long feed pathway. Okay, so let's get into this thing. There's one of the mounting points. There's the other mounting point. That's the unlock. You can see the cover just pops right off of this thing. So you can see the poly gears in there. And if you look closely, you'll probably be able to see a poly gear that's broken. So first step here, um, take our Allen wrench and loosen up this left screw. And um, this particular one was quite tight. I actually was looking at this thing to see whether I was gonna break it or what was going on. But um, I think it possibly just had maybe a little bit of uh, either melted plastic from the manufacturing process or perhaps um, the uh, screw itself maybe had a little bit of Loctite or something on it. And um, you see me there, I actually uh, 
forgot to review the bearing when I uh, unboxed or unpackaged everything there. So no secret here, um, just loosen up these two screws that hold the uh, plastic gears in and um, replace with the uh, new metal gears. So we'll fill, watch this one all the way through and then uh, I'll kick it into warp drive again and uh, move forward. No secret too, you have to be careful that little spring where my thumb was there. Uh, make sure that guy doesn't pop out on you. That's part of the locking mechanism. And of course you're gonna wanna put the uh, other hardware aside and use the new hardware. The heads are a little bit different on the metal set. All right, yeah, so this is going along well. You can see here I've got out one of the uh, poly gears. This one has all of its teeth intact. I know it's not the best focus there, but you can definitely see the teeth. The teeth are all intact on that one. But you can see how this is uh, this gear is half plastic and half metal. I just like the uh, the all metal version so much better. It's gonna have so much more strength and uh, just you know one last thing to break and definitely gonna have better reliability in the long run here. Let's see if I can get this other gear off um, here in a second. And uh, we'll have a look at the broken tooth on that one. That's the one that had the broken tooth on it, I believe. And uh, I had a little bit of problems, like I said, getting this to loosen up. It did uh, end up breaking free for me and um, indeed did have a, a broken tooth on it, which was causing the extrusion problems that I uh, was experiencing. Like I said, I had some clicking noises occasionally and um, some under extrusion uh, here and there. So. All right, let's get out this uh, last poly gear and get it off. I had to put quite a bit of force on that. Uh, like I said, I have a feeling that the uh, screw itself had some Loctite on it or something like that beforehand, but um, it did end up breaking free and coming off. It did not damage uh, the extruder whatsoever. So I was super happy with uh, how this turned out. And uh, as you see here, I had a gear or possibly two teeth that had cracked off of this thing. Um, again, the focus isn't perfect here, but you can definitely see uh, the section here that's missing the tooth. Right there you go. You can see that tooth right there is completely gone. And I actually did find the tooth in the case of the extruder. So if you've got tooth missing or teeth missing, um, clean out your extruder case there. It, uh, it actually fell out when I opened the case and uh, I found it. So. Anyway, one tooth off, one tooth found, and uh, no tooth getting in your new gears. So, um, yeah, from here, it's dead opposite of what we've just done. We're going to take these metal gears, we're going to use the new hardware, and we're going to reinstall this. Um, little inspection, just checking the uh, bearings there on the main drive gear. Just wanted to have a quick look at that, and make sure there weren't any uh, plastic deposits back in there, anything like that. So. Here we go, dead opposite. I'm gonna put this into fast forward. You probably don't need to see the uh, entire reassembly process. The bearing there that I've got in my hand goes on top of the uh, main drive bearing there. Okay, I'm um, gonna do a little fast forwarding and catch you on the other end. All right, I've got the first gear back on here and um, just want to do a little uh, test here and make sure everything's um, rotating easily and not binding up. You can see everything's just fine there. So with that done, I'll kick it into uh, warp speed again here, get that other gear on, and then we'll reinstall the overall extruder. All right, crew, we're back. Um, this thing is put together and I just want to do a little test, make sure everything's spinning freely. You can see there that the uh, main drive input is definitely spinning the two new metal gears and the extruder. So voila, um, this looks perfect. Feeling really good about it. Um, ready to put the cover back on and then get this thing back in the printer. Uh, it's a good idea to test your locking mechanism there. Uh, you'll find this thing doesn't want to lock unless you've got this thing screwed together. Uh, there must be some geometry that changes a little bit. Uh, I was a little concerned with that the first one of these that I worked on, um, but have come to learn that uh, they don't really want to lock unless they've got some force on them. And that whole cover and everything is screwed back onto the um, stepper motor. So um, here we go. And 
think we're ready to reinstall this guy. You can see now the lock's gonna work. Okay, let's go to the machine and install this. All right, crew, we're back over to the printer here. You can see the stepper motor's hanging exactly where we left it. Um, really, there's not too, too much to this other than getting this uh, stepper motor lined back up. All right, crew, we're back over the printer now. Um, we just have to get this extruder back on the stepper motor and then get the whole assembly back onto the uh, main body of the printer. You can see that that went on pretty easy. Sometimes you get a little bit of uh, issue with that gear lining up with the um, gears in the extruder itself. You gotta wiggle it around a little bit, then get the uh, screws lined up and tighten those down. So again here, I'm tightening these, um, just snugging them up, and then I'm gonna come back and do a firm tighten on both screws after they've both been just loosely tightened. Just find things align better that way, put less stress on things. All right, I'm gonna kick this into warp drive. There's not much here. You just gotta put those two screws back in and then the other three and uh, make sure that obviously the extruder gets lined up on the uh, what would be the Bowden tube or the filament feed there. Okay, I'm gonna throw this into warp drive and we'll catch you when it's done. All right, we're getting near the end here now. The three screws have all went back in. It's just time to put the uh, filament feed line back in. Yeah, and give me a thumbs up. I'm liking this progress. Okay, um, let's throw this filament feed line back in and um, see if we get through the extruder and make sure everything's okay. Remember, you gotta have your nozzle heated up here and you need to have the extruder unlocked just like that. And we should be able to push all the way through the extruder and get down into the hot end and actually get some filament coming out here. I always like to uh, feed by hand a little bit. There we go, filament's coming out, looking good. All right, that's how you fix your extruder and upgrade to metal gears. I hope you learned something today. Captain 3D, out.